If you have a favorite floral design that you have fallen in love with, why not use it for a beautiful Christmas card? I am enthusiastic when it comes to Christmas and I'm definitely in the spirit. So when I saw Alex Siberia Designs Grateful Heart, I had no choice. It had to be a Christmas card. I began with an ink smooshed background on Bristol Smooth cardstock using Distress Oxide inks, Hickory Smoke, Pumice Stone, Kitsch Flamingo, and Wilted Violet. When the panel was completely dry, I printed my digital image on it. I'm making this card with someone in mind and I wanted a beautiful big image, so this is a five by seven card. I'm going to be Copic coloring and there's a lot to color, so I like to break it down. When I'm coloring a design that has lots of different elements, I like to focus in on one thing at a time. And so I'll begin by coloring in all of the leaves. I'm going to be working with some violet tones. V000, 04, 06, and 09. And on a couple of branches, I use a little bit of W7. For each set of leaves, I choose three colors from the list that I've shown you. When I color, I like to work darkest to lightest, lightest to dark is fine too. I like to be as efficient as I can with my time, and so when I'm coloring a branch of leaves, I'll apply the dark tone to all of the leaves, then move on to my mid-tone and then my light tone. Some Copic colors blend easier than others, and I got lucky I chose tones that blend beautifully, and I only have to apply my color once. When all the leaves are colored, it's much easier for me to see those flowers with their multiple petals. I love red and violet tones together, and so for the flowers, I've chosen to work with R81, 83, 85 and 89. As I color the flowers, I'm going to be alternating between two different color combinations. For the flowers that are more red toned, I will be working with R83, 85 and 89. But for those that are more pinkish, I'll start with R81, 83 and 85. I'm sure you've noticed that my voice is sounding a little bit nasal. I am harboring a terrible head cold, which was kindly passed on to me by my grandson. Anyways, it's not the virus, it's just a normal head cold, and this too shall pass. So you may have noticed that I am coloring one petal at a time, working through all three tones. This is typical for me when I switch over to another color combination until I feel comfortable with it. The coloring process is pretty much the same as with the leaves. I start at the base with a darker tone. Sometimes I'll take it slightly up the side and then I move on to my mid-tone and finish off with a highlight with the lighter tone. There is a fair amount of coloring involved with this design and it did take me a couple of sittings to complete it. Next, the panel was spattered using Distress Stain Brushed Pewter. I used a number one paintbrush so that the spatter would be fine. And look at all that shiny silvery spatter. While the spatter was drying, I got the sentiment ready I die cut Simon Says Stamps large written Merry Christmas from both black cardstock and foam. I'm applying thin streams of glue to the sentiment. I'm using Tombow glue. When it is dry, it is tacky and it'll give me some flexibility to get the sentiment aligned to the foam backing. So while that glue is drying, I have a cardstock panel that is slightly smaller than 5 by 7 inches which I'm going to attach to the card base. Before I die cut the panel using Simon Says Stamps Thin Circle Frames, the panel was trimmed down to 4 and 3 quarter inches by 6 and 3 quarter inches. It is then adhered to the black cardstock. 
The die for the thin circle frame was also used to cut black foam. After the circle die cut was mounted on the foam, it was adhered to the center of the panel. Because of the black cardstock panel, I didn't have to worry about the thin frame produced by the die. The gap between the panel and the circle resulted in a frame. I did, however, pay attention to the pattern and make sure that they aligned. The Tombow glue is dry and I'm ready to stack this sentiment on its foam backing. I do have to do a little bit of fiddling to make sure that everything's lined up and so I'm glad that I have the flexibility that this tacky surface affords me. After the sentiment has adhered to the card, I use Black Nouveau Drops to highlight the dot detail on the flowers. These dots are quite tiny and you do have to be careful when you're applying them. They are close together, but you don't want them too close together, otherwise it'll just be one big black mass. When I need to produce a fine detail with my Nouveau Drops, I always practice first on paper. I find that after the practice, the Nouveau Drops is starting to flow nicely and you just need to apply the slightest pressure to the bottle and tap it on the paper. And if you're not comfortable with this but still would like that highlight, you can apply the Nouveau Drops to a pin and then transfer the Nouveau Drops from the pin to your paper. And of course I need sparkle on the card, so I finish up with lots of clear sequins. I'm taking those sequins to the next level and topping them up with Nouveau Crystal Drops Morning Dew. When the Morning Dew dries, it is clear, and these sequins look like beautiful jewels. And that wraps up this card featuring Alex Siberia Designs Grateful Heart, dressed up in holiday splendor. All of the links for the products used in this design can be found on my blog at bonniecarolee.com or in the description of my YouTube video. As always, I appreciate your visit.